What is the worst season of a good show? Season 2 of Promised Neverland. It went from an interesting and thrilling story on a farm, to going through or skipping the rest of its arcs at the speed of light. Oof if we got into Shanime seasons this thread would be so much longer. Stairs in Tokyo Ghoul. Season 9 of The X-Files. Fox execs were greedy and wanted to milk that cow till the last drop. They had no show to replace that would have similar ratings. If what I've read is correct, from what I've read, even Gillian Anderson was ready to move on. I still can't believe it. The X-Files without murder. Personally, I liked season 8 because he was still in it half the season and they wrote around Dee Dee's absence, and the S8 ending was more than satisfactory, but no matter all season, what were they thinking? Season 4 of Arrow they hyped the villain Damien Dark so much, nothing Oliver, Green Arrow, was doing could match him, and then in the end, two words hope and happiness and Voiler, Oliver won, that really sucked. I was so curious to know what he will do to win but power of hope love happiness. Didn't see that coming. Was that the season where the peripegic girl broke up with Oliver so hard she learned to walk again just so she could walk out on him? Yep. Season 4. The worst part of that fight was that Oliver is known for his archery and Damien for his magic. So how do they settle things? Why by punching each other of course. Damien was a much better villain antagonist on Legends of Tomorrow. Neil McDonough is honestly a delight to watch. Arrow sucked as soon as he went non-lethal. He was like the Punisher in the first season. Then half his team used his submachine guns which somehow are non-lethal. Getting Vintage. Final season of Bone and Zer. Dan Bloker, the actor who plays Hoss Cartwright, had died from complications of gallbladder surgery. The series continued without him and even mentioned the character's death in universe. The fictional Hoss had died trying to save a man's life. Yet the series wasn't the same without the beloved character. Many fans have never seen the episodes without him because the final season rarely sold in syndication. The western drama was one of the longest running as network dramas of all time. And dealt with social issues such as racism in an era when most programs avoided controversy. You know there's a great and very serious podcast that's recapping every episode of that classic show. They are born on us for it. Season 8 of that 70s show. I try to pretend it doesn't exist. The worst part of season 8 is that it not only sucks but they make the remaining characters look like losers. Donna not going to college to wait on Eric. The Fez Jackie storyline. The Hyde record store thing. All the season 8 story arcs were depressing. Hyde and Jackie are horrible to each other and both act like it was a mistake that they ever dated. And then she hooks up with Fez. It's like they were trying to offend Jackie Hyde fans as much as possible. To me. This was the worst thing about season 8. Not Randy. Randy sucks. But he was almost entirely left out of the finale. And he doesn't retroactively ruin earlier seasons. But how season 8 treats Jackie and Hyde ruins their relationship. Because you know how it will end. I hated that Donna didn't go to college. That 70s show had to deal with the sliding time scale and the fact that they decided to just not keep them in high school the entire time. Once they graduate the writers had to come up with ways to justify all of them still being together. Which wasn't all that great and really wearing thin. Cast departures aside, by the time they reach the last two seasons. It's especially wonky because they were all in junior year from 76-78, and then from 78 to the end of 79 they somehow go from being seniors to being two years out of high school. Not about the season but the show in general. Worst part is the cast departures. It just felt like the series was treading water but having characters leave but it even worse because the remaining ones are stuck in this what the f am I still doing here place for a whole season. They actually had a good replacement lined up for Eric. Charlie, who appeared at the end of season 7. He was kind of a do-gooder kid who audiences quite liked. Unfortunately before S8 happened the actor got the lead role in some other show so he dropped out of S8. And they then replaced him with Randy who everybody absolutely hated. Somewhere in between there Ashton Kutcher realized it was time to leave too and they gave Tommy Chong a bigger role to fill his space. And I like Tommy Chong. But his character was never meant to get that much screen time. I skip to the finale as soon as Kelso leaves every time. The lottery winning season of Roseanne. It made me so effing mad. Not even close to plausible. It especially infuriated that they wrote Dan Connor as a typical cheating spouse that would fall for some bimbo now that he had money after 25 plus years of being faithful to his wife and family. 
get real and then the insult that the entire series was all a story in Rosen's mind where she had made the characters into whatever she felt told a better story than her real life. In the final episode, pissed me off beyond belief. Roseanne was one of the only sitcoms of that time, and perhaps ever, that accurately depicted the struggles of a working class family. The lottery winning season was such a slap in the face of the whole premise of the show. Malcolm in the Middle depicted a working class family pretty well I think. I just heard Tom Monald talk about this on Stern. He said he had to talk her out of the lottery episode several times. Then after he left and they divorced that was the first thing they did to the show. And it was just as bad as he told her it would be. Yikes. When Tom Monald is the voice of reason in your life. Honestly the whole thing being in her head. And the lottery season in particular meant to be a metaphor or whatever could have worked if they had alluded to along the way. Her feeling cheated on Biden dying is an interesting way to approach grief and I just wish the lottery season had more of a dreamlike quality to it or something. I don't hate that those things were canon until the reboot, where they are picking and choosing later seasons thing to consider canon. I just hate how they were implemented at the last second and in no way hinted at prior. Make the whole thing a story in her head. Fine but give us hints from the beginning that's what's happening. The final season of Castle. More like the last three seasons. My god that show started going downhill fast after season 5. I loved season 4 and most of 5. But when they tried to throw in relationship drama between Castle and Beckett out of nowhere at the end of season 5. I got so mad. Just let them have a normal, happy relationship and bring in drama elsewhere. It was totally unbelievable after all the work they had both put into the relationship for them not to communicate their issues. And then we didn't even get a happy wedding episode because they added that stupid plot about Castle getting kidnapped. So dumb. Leverage is such a good show and I really wish they made more episodes in its initial run. Season 2 was its worst season. I never grew to like Tara and I just wanted Sophie back. Plus, it felt like they kept getting caught that season for some reason. Every other season was so much better. Every season of Heroes after the first one, Peter saves the cheerleader, saves the world, then he becomes OP as F, then he gets nerfed. I don't even remember what happened after that. Peter gets nerfed repeatedly, originally he can copy multiple powers simultaneously, then one at a time, then it was whatever power belonged to the last person he made skin contact with. I'm still pissed about that season 3 fight with Syla. Picture this. The whole season you are sitting through this trudge of a build up where both characters are gaining powers and gearing up for an ultimate battle. Wherein Dexter totally negated obliterated the original premise of the show. Which was, in fact, quite a good premise. Anybody down to TL. DR the terrible ending. PLSU spoiler text, I loved the show but stopped watching when Dexter and his sister started getting horny for each other or some sh**. Season 2 was my favorite season but the Trinity season was amazing too. Fun fact they were married in real life. I was absolutely convinced that Dexter would end up caught and receiving final injection with his sister watching him behind the glass. It would have been perfect. Him laying down on a sterile environment, surrounded by his killers. Dying just like all the killers he killed. But no. They decided that he would flee and become a lumberjack in Canada. What? Oh. The original ending idea from creator was this and to have the ghosts of all the people he killed in the viewer room watching the injection. The seventh season of Once Upon a Time. It wasn't bad. But it was ultimately pointless in the way that it was presented. It was practically a failed imitation and mirror of the show's first season. It wasn't as nearly as charming. Magical or mysterious as the first season. It was just, there and felt disjointed. I loved the idea of Once Upon a Time so much, but every season it was some magical spell to make the characters forget. Over over, I tried to rewatch it but cannot get past the fourth season. I hated how the evil queen would become good, then evil, then good, then evil, now Snow White is evil, etc. I was done. This might not make much sense but every season of Thomas the Tank Engine after season 7 became the generic kids show with no substance and as you can see later this year's it's more evident than ever. It's a disgrace to Mr. Audrey and everyone in charge of the original show who made something way bigger than a generic kids show. It had such great lessons, funny moments, serious moments, scary moments, great narration from Ringo Starr, George Cullen, Alec Baldwin, and Michael Angelis. Fantastic music, great model trains, 
and sets. Everything was so great even adults enjoy it but not the new stuff. Once he'd bought the show it became a baby lesson show with terrible narration, horrible lessons, lame stories and sets, bland music, and then it got the CGI treatment. No more models mean no more actual life in the show. Many say the Brenner era from I think season 15-22 was great but I can't agree. No matter who comes in and writes good material now, Mattel has further butchered the show and it's making such little money now even kids don't enjoy it. I wish Brit never sold those rights to hit. That was the start of the end. I love the passion in this comment. My son who is 14 now was quite possibly the biggest Thomas the Tank Engine fan. It wasn't just a show or toy to him it was a lifestyle for about 7 years. He refused to watch or play with anything else, except Wally, -E, and had Thomas parties and wore Thomas clothing. He would 100% agree with you. In fact I am going to show him your comment. He has a 2 year old little brother and he refuses to allow him to watch the newer shows which he calls trash. It sold school Thomas or nothing. I grew up on the Ringo star and Michael and Jealous ones. To people my age Ringo is more Thomas than he is a Beatle. The model trains had charm. I grew up in the Carlin era. Discovering his comedy later on was definitely an adjustment for me. This comment right here made me want to watch a kid's show that I am never interested in. Dude you look so invested in this I really wanna watch it and analyze it like another big show. And buy accessories like small desk statues AMD stuff. You won't be disappointed. Check YouTube for the first 7 seasons. They're all free and I've been rewatching them once more enjoying every second. Season 3 onwards prison break. First 2 were insane though. Season 3 was a step down. But season 4 is horrendous. I had to stop after the first episode in season 4. I don't even want to know what happens. To go from breaking out of prison to saving the world. I don't even remember what the ridiculous plot was at that point. I've completely blocked it out. I think there should be a law that stops the CW from making any show for more than 4 seasons at the very most. So the old Netflix treatment behind the shed. Supernatural gets 5 since that's where the original story was supposed to end. Supernatural had a lot of really good to great monster of the week episodes after season 5. My favorite is the golem episode where they hunt Nazis. Once they established that angels and demons were way overpowered and dark angels were super way overpowered it really limited the stories that could be told. Flash after season 3 was abysmal. The final season of House of Cards. Undoubtedly wins the prize for worst season of a good show. They could have made a great season about Claire dealing with Frank's death and legacy, but they rushed. The writing was so bad. The last two episodes felt like a cheap horror movie. Trick question. The answer is, every show during the 2007 to 2008 writer's strike. I don't know. I think Pushing Days has remained pretty consistent in its brilliance across its two seasons. Still mad that it was cancelled. That show needs more. I loved that series even if it was only two season. R.I.P. Life. It wasn't super popular to begin with but the writer's strike killed that show. Bones after Temperance and Booth got together. I still like it. Don't get me wrong but sure lost something. For me it's after Sweets died. I do agree it was weird how they handled Booth and Bones getting together. I still felt their chemistry was the same just a bit different. But something about Sweets death did something to the show because we all watched waiting for when they would get together, and then they just, skipped it, glossed over it, went from not together to like an old married couple, so disappointing, it's why I watch, the way they got together was so disappointing, to me, afterwards, Bones, the character, was just, different, they truly didn't know how to write a woman who has a kid but isn't motherly in the same way as society dictates, the blatant product placements killed it for me, the episode where Booth hallucinates Stewie from Family Guy was when that show jumped the shark. There was also an episode that season that was a giant product placement for Avatar and another that was a weird dream about a nightclub. These new F and Spongebob seasons. They really should change the term flanderization to spongification because nearly every single character has been distilled to a single tray in a capacity worse than what happened to Ned. Yeah, like Spongebob starts off as a dorky guy in his 20s with a bunch of weird hobbies and friends just living life. Then later he becomes an absolute moron that's a danger to himself and society and basically equal to Patrick. Who BTW started off as someone Spongebob could go to for advice and was also nuanced. 
Yeah to be honest I barely noticed the Flanders things the characters I hate most in the new Simpsons seasons are Bart and Lisa, because neither of them are likable. Lisa is a pessimist know-it-all, and Bart is an obnoxious child with no new jokes. Season 5-6 of Flash, all of it is just Barry and Iris show FT, Nora, and now they got rid of Cisco. I started watching when I heard Tom Felton was joining the cast so I binged the first two or three seasons to watch his season and I really enjoyed it. Loved Tom's season. Hated the robbery Jim Carrey knockoff they got in the next season. Though apparently I was alone in that, and stopped watching. But Cisco and Caitlin were the characters I watched the show for. Barry and Iris were always ridiculously annoying. That and Barry's enemies were frequently just people somehow faster than Barry despite him being the fastest man alive. Whichever season had Cicada ruined it for me. They actually beat him about three times. Throughout the season. But then they just stood around and waited for him to get his knife back. Cisco could have easily sent the knife to another galaxy or even an alternate earth. But no. It was just a near earth orbit. The killer frost arc also completely broke the logic of the show. Until then. Powers didn't make someone bad. They still had a choice about how to use their power. People with powers also didn't develop a split personality alter ego. But that all changed with Caitlyn and they never explained why. At least not before I stopped watching. They actually beat him about three times. Throughout the season. But then they just stood around and waited for him to get his knife back. Okay. But Barry does that with nearly every enemy. He runs in. Says something like hey bro. You gotta stop. Then gets blasted hit whatever. These are. Usually. Meter criminals. Just whoosh in. Knock them out and put the power dampeners on. And done. But nope. That never happens. Every season once Frozen came in once upon a time especially the last one. Season 1 was amazing in my opinion. The show hooked me and sparked much interest in how they'd continue the next season. Then season 2 started and it was good. But the decrease in quality was obvious. It was just downhill from there. Season 9 and onward of Grey's Anatomy. I'm on season 14. But personally anything after season 9 including itself. It's simply mediocre compared to the previous seasons. I think season 14 is where I stopped. I binged the first 9 seasons in a week one summer, but just couldn't care enough about the characters after Derek's death. To me it was rather recent. When Alex left I just can't see it. It was so dumb. I would have rather them kill him off. <laughs> Promise Neverland season 2 you know why. Came here to comment this. God that was awful. Biggest letdown ever. And season 1 was amazing. Star Trek TNG season 1. It's not an absolute dumpster fire, but it's very rough. The episode where Wesley is nearly executed for falling in a greenhouse on that sex planet is hilarious though. Wesley goes to the planet of blonde nymphos, gets the death penalty and still leaves a virgin. OMG I remember that one. It's the one that seems like a utopia, but that's only because every crime no matter how small is punishable by death. Riker before his beard is something else. I like how it's only the second episode. If you count the pilot two-parter as one episode. And we find out that Data FS. The single biggest problem with that episode. There were many. But this one pervades all the others. Is how early it was. Virus infection parasite spores whatever make the crew act wildly out of character is a perfectly fine premise. But the audience needs time to nail down what in character is before you start radically deviating from it without any real connection to the characters. How can you care when they're acting abnormally? Parks and Recreation Season 1. They restarted again in Season 2, most notably making Leslie S character less dumb and it worked well. Dude I totally agree with this. Most people say it was getting rid of Mark that changed the tone of the show but honestly it was how they changed Leslie. She went from this annoying simpleton to a driven, politically literate workaholic. Agreed. Mark's character gets a lot of hate but his character just wasn't needed anymore because they brilliantly retooled all the main characters. Mark was the level-headed one amongst a gaggle of misfits but in season 2 they were kind-hearted misfits and Mark had no purpose anymore. It was completely 189 Leslie's character that made her someone to root for. As someone who looked into parks and recreation once and didn't like the first episode, should I just start with season 2? Season 8 of Dexter. It already got pretty uninteresting apart from season 7 but season 8 went downhill in quality from beginning to the end. 
with quite possibly the worst series finale I have seen, yes even worse than God. It blows my mind that the novel series is supernatural when the early television series seasons were pretty realistic. His Dark Passenger is a literal actual demon in the books. Dexter is one of the only cases where the adaptation of better than the original. I gave up reading after book 3 or 4. Last season of Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Season 9 of Scrubs. Just no. The creator, Bill Lawrence, has said as far as he is concerned Scrubs was 8 seasons and there was a single season spin-off. I can't find proof of it anywhere. But I distinctly recall season 9 being advertised as a spin-off called Scrubs, Med School. They only started calling it season 9 when it got cancelled. It was supposed to be a spin-off but ABC got cold feet and made them promote it as a new season. Community season 4. I think it is better than Reddit gives it credit for. But it noticeably worse than the other 5 seasons. Well, there was a gas leak. So, well, Greendale was closed for sentimental reasons and asbestos reasons, but it's clean as a whistle now. The first two seasons of Community are absolute gold and should be protected at all costs. Season 6 of the 100. The show was good but it went to hell after season 3. Then it just got worse and worse until they finally ended it after season 6. Sounds like a CW show. Every CW show should stop after two seasons. They always go bad with season 3. The Flash is the prime example of an strong first season and a mediocre second season and a bad every season afterwards. I'm currently watching The Vampire Diaries. It's not a masterpiece by any stretch, but entertaining enough. Anyway I'm up to season 7 and I'm thinking Eleanor hasn't been around for a while. I get she's in a magical coma or whatever, but it's kinda weird she's not woke up yet. Google it because it was bugging me. The actress quit the show. So I'd say season 7 of The Vampire Diaries, because of Winnie Damon. Julian is a bitch not at all formidable. Stefan has all but abandoned Caroline, but at least Alaric is still an alcoholic. You should check out YouTuber Jenny Nicholson's video on The Vampire Diaries. It's two hours long. But I think she's entertaining while breaking down how ridiculous the plot gets and the behind the scenes stuff. That absolutely dreadful Irish arc on Sons of Anarchy. I binged Sewer pretty hard until they went to Ireland. I maybe lasted 3 or 4 episodes into that season and have never gone back. Season 2 of Altered Carbon. The first season was incredible. It didn't shy away from showing literally everything to convey the brutality of that world. This made any sequence or interaction feel much more mature and gritty. The story was unique and interesting. Felt fresh. Overall I loved that first season and will watch it again. Season 2 completely threw that formula out the window. It basically got turned into a borderline PG-13 generic Sifi action show. It shied away from every element that made the first season so interesting. Instead this made season 2 feel a bit generic. And uninteresting. Not only that. But I felt the world building was much worse. The locations were a bit generic and bland looking. Lacked the same kind of detail and life from the first season. It lacked character. It was like they just took the minimum core elements from season 1 and just boiled it down to a handful of simple locations and designs. All that along with a much more toned down maturity level made the action sequences seem tame and cleaned up. A big aspect to season 1 was they just showed all the violence. All the six. So that you really understood the seriousness of that world. You were shown exactly the kind of people occupy that universe. And how fed up things can get. Season 2 cleaned all that up and threw it away. Ultimately that killed the show and it got cancelled not long after. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 1. It was alright. Rather slow start and probably would have been cancelled. Then Captain America. Winter Soldier came out. Which affected the show and it really took off. The later seasons got even weirder, but in a good way. Season 4 of Angel. Did Cordelia dirty? S1 and S2 of Killing Eve are in F incredible, but S3 is noticeably different. Each season has had a different showrunner and certain writing character etc decisions were made for S3 that didn't fit the overall tone of the show. And it showed. I'm hoping that season 4, which also has a new showrunner, will be closer to S1 and S2. Arrested Development Seasons 4 and 5. 4 was okay. They just don't come close to the original. I think 5 was a little better. I hate the Netflix remix though. It's just hours of exposition. Stop explaining sh- This is Netflix. 
We remember what happened because we probably watched the last season earlier today. 